Hello and welcome. We're going to learn together um, developing uh, using the Direct Show library using the C++ programming language. So let's get started. So start and let's go to the Visual Studio. And this is basically what I'm going to be using to program. I'm going to create a new project and it's going to be a, I'm going to choose other languages Visual C++, Win32 uh, Win32 project and we're going to name this this is going to be test direct show and click OK and next we're going to be starting with a Windows application and I'm going to choose here empty project I'd like to start from scratch and finish and while the project has been created I'd like to tell you that I'm using the Visual Studio 2010 very nice. Now, basically, what I'd like to build, let's hang on to the Visual Studio. I'm going to minimize it. Let's go to the Internet and let me go to Google and let me search for uh, MSDN Direct Show. And very nice. Direct Show MSDN Microsoft. Let's go there. And very nice. Very nice. Now, what I would recommend for you to do is to go through the Direct Show documentation uh, step by step. And that's what I'd like to do with you together. So, but I'm, I'm not going to read it with you completely, but let, let me basically uh, touch some points so let me see so introduction to direct show that's very nice let's go back to direct show and getting started building direct show applications so let's go to building direct show applications very nice so one of the one of the first things that they say is that we should include dshow.h so I'm going to copy this. The question is, do they have code? No, there's no code that I can copy. Okay, direct show, dshow.h. This, inc this includes all the direct show. Uh, this is required for all direct show applications. Okay, let's go back to the Visual Studio. and Let's add uh, a source file. Add a new item. And this is going to be our main uh, file. So I'm going to select over here from on the left side, I'm going to select code and C++ file.cpp. And this is going to be my main CPP file. Add. And over here, well, before we start actually writing a direct show application, let's first uh, just make sure that we can compile and run this program. So um, let me try and click F6. F6 tries to build and what I see that I need is a win main uh, function. So a win main function uh, should be int win main open close parentheses open close bra uh, braces and it should be something like uh, void star void star int int or something like that and let's return 0 f6 let's see yeah build succeeded and I can actually run this F11, F11 and this actually runs. It doesn't display anything and actually if I hit F11 once more I'm gonna end up here in this file. I don't care for this too much. Let, let, I'd, let, I'd like to let it run to completion. Very nice. 
Okay, so once we've done this, let's try and include the dshow.h file. So again, copy, and over here, include, control V, enter, F6. Our win main function cannot be overloaded. So I guess this is not what the win main function ought to look like. So let's go back and hit win main over here. Win main entry point. Let's see. Okay, so this is what win main should look like. Let's just let's copy this. Let's go back to the Visual Studio and instead of this, let's, or instead of this, let's paste what we got from the internet, from the MSDN. And what do we need? Let's remove the semicolon and let's hit F6. See, oh, build succeeded. Very nice. Okay. And F11, yeah, it seems to run perfectly. F5, let it run to completion. Very nice. Okay, let's go back to the internet, to the direct show <laughs> documentation. Let's see what else do we need. So they say over here, direct show uses the static library files shown in the following table files. So we need a, a stream i stream. It should be stream iids.lib ex exports class identifiers, CLS IDs, and interface identifiers, IIDs. Okay, so we need this. And quartz lib exports the active movie get error text function. If you do not call this function, this library is not required. Okay. All right, so let's uh, um, let's add this lib to our project. So let me copy it. Go back to the Visual Studio. Right button click on the project properties and linker and plus and input and additional dependencies. Let me see what we got over here. Edit. Very nice. Um, Again, which one was it? STRMIID, stream IDs. So let me see if it's already included over here. I don't see it over here. So right button click, paste. OK, OK. F6 seems to be OK. Very nice. Let's go back to the documentation. Let's also add quartz lib. So copy it. And again, right button click properties and input and edit and enter yeah and paste add another enter okay okay f6 build succeeded very nice continue all right let me see what else might be important for us over here i don't see anything else that's critical right now. Let's go to the next topic. So, introduction to direct show application programming. Very nice. So, filters and filter graphs. All right. So, when we program in direct show, well, when do we need direct show? So direct show is useful when we want to program uh, multimedia, either audio or video. So if I want to build a Skype-like application or a Windows Media Player application, if I want to transmit video, transmit audio, both, that's basically when I'd like to use direct show. It, it basically simplifies 
the programming. All right, so if I'd like to build an application, what they have here in this diagram, they have an example that we have, um, we have a file on the disk that's a, a multimedia file. Let's say it's a movie, and I'd like to watch the movie. So how ultimately do I watch the movie? Well, you would say, well, you, you, you have a, a, a multimedia file player on your computer, and you just double-click the file, a WMV file, AVI file, you just double-click it, or even simply, just go to the internet, and you go to YouTube, and you just click on play, and you just, you just watch the movie. Right, so I would say correct, but behind the scenes, whoever programmed the player, or YouTube even, how, how, how did they do it? So, ultimately, um, there is this sort of, um, I would say, a, a graph of programming components that have to work together in order for us ultimately to be able to see the video and hear the audio. And these components would include some sort of a, a file source that reads from the file, and a, an audio video splitter that splits the audio and the video in the file into two separate streams because basically you would say they have nothing to do with each other except for they should be played in, in some sort of synchronicity they should be played together very nice so we need to split the two streams we should have basically I would say a video they they say here AV but it's basically a video decompressor in case the video is compressed so we should have a software component that decompresses the compressed video and then we should have a component that renders the video to the screen similarly going back to the AVI splitter the audio video splitter we should have a, a stream coming out of the component that does this splitting. We should have a compo uh, uh, We should have an arrow, a connection from this component doing the splitting to the component doing the the actual rendering, the playing of the sound. We should also have, similarly to the video decom decompressor, we should have an audio de decompressor in case the audio is compressed and ultimately the audio renderer should, should have access to the speakers and the video renderer has access to the screen so we end up seeing the movie so basically if you program, if you write a program, if you develop a program that plays a media file basically this is what you're going to end up programming you're going to actually write these components these classes and each class is going to concentrate on what it's supposed to do and then it's going to take a little bit of information from the file this component is going to take the, a little bit of information from the file and then transfer it to the splitter. The splitter is going to transfer bits of the video to the de video decompressor, bits of the audio to the audio decompressor. The decompressor is going to decompress and then get, hand over bits of data to the video render and the audio decompressor is going to give bits of the decompressed audio to the audio renderer and then we're going to be able to see